Should I share my screen? Not yet. When I'm done, I'll share. Okay, we are recording. I want to just say hello, welcome to any participants. Um, we, I had to, my name is Amy. I am a facilitator with the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling. We want to welcome you to our virtual college exploration program for Illinois students. Um, there is a Q&A at the bottom of the screen where you can type questions and our presenters will respond to you. We cannot see you, we cannot hear you. So if you scream, we won't know. Um, just ask your Q&A questions in that Q&A box. Uh, you can still sign up for some more sessions. We are almost done, but there's a few left and the recordings for all of the past sessions and this one will be available through IACAC.org. So that is my deal. I'm gonna pass the mic, shall we say, over to Rachel, right? And you're gonna share your screen and I'm gonna go away and just listen. Have a great uh, session. Thank you. Thank you. All right. One second. All right. Good evening. Thank you so. I stopped screen sharing. So just one second here. I'll share it again. Okay. Take two. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining myself, Rachel Odorth from Southeast Missouri State University, along with Rachel McCleary from Southern Illinois University Edwardsville and Terrence Bishop from Southern Illinois University. All three of our institutions are in the heartland. Tonight, you'll get to learn more about how to get involved and how you will be supported. Transitioning to college is a big step, and we are here to let you know all about the resources that will help make it a smooth and successful transition. Please place any questions you have in that chat window. I will now turn it over to Rachel to get us started. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel McClary and I'm an admissions counselor at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, just as Rachel had mentioned. Um, this slide right here just kind of shows you where we are located um, in the state of Illinois. So we really are not that far from each other. So, for this presentation, one of the first things again, that I'm going to touch base on are the SIUE student resources. I'm not going to cover all of them as you can see them, but I am going to point out a few that I really enjoy and those that I did use during my time at SIUE in my undergrad. So the first one that I'm going to point out is the Career Development Center. I love this um, center for lots of reasons. The first being that they have what is known as the Cougar Closet. So faculty here on campus, they do donate very nice apparel there where students can visit this closet twice a month and get two full outfits for free. So when I say two full outfits for free, I mean everything from your head to your toe. Um, th these clothing items are very nice and the purpose of this closet is to make sure that students have um, availability to clothing that they can use for events that are coming up or even possible job interviews. Another thing that I really like about the Career Development Center is that if you have an upcoming interview and you're really nervous about it, they will set up a mock interview with you to work with your nurse to tell you what you're doing right and tell you what you're doing wrong. They'll also critique your resume and then um, they will also give you a career personality test if you are unsure of maybe what you want to major in or what you want to do once you graduate. So basically by taking this test, it will populate some results to give you advice on what you could potentially do. So the next thing that I want to touch base on is the Student Fitness Center. So as a student at SIUB, you do have full access to the Student Fitness Center. When you attend the Student Fitness Center, you do have to have your student ID, just so that way we know you're a student, but you have full access to um, all of our tennis courts, basketball courts, volleyball courts, our exercise equipment. We have a sauna on campus, as well as a swimming pool. The list does go on. Something else that I do want to point out is ITS, which is our tech services here on campus. If you're anything like me, I'm just trying to navigate my way through the, through all of this, especially using Zoom. Um, I am not tech savvy whatsoever. I'm constantly having issues with my computer, my phone, you name it. This service, will they will, they're available 24-7 and they will fix your phone, your computer, your laptop, whatever, for free, as long as it's not a cosmetic issue like a cracked phone screen. In that case, you're going to have to visit Apple for that one. Another thing that I want to point out is university hair. So we do have a place on campus where you can get your hair cut and colored. Um, this is especially good for students who are coming from afar and they don't know where to go in the town of Edwardsville itself. So do you know that this is available? 
Um, the last thing that I want to point out is our health and counseling services. So what is cool about the health and counseling services is that there is a clinic here on campus. Um, they do not accept insurance, um, but it is no more than $10 to visit and no more than $10 to get any prescription. So there's the clinic itself, there's the pharmacy, and then there's also the uh, counseling portion as well if you ever feel like you need to speak with someone. And we're going to go ahead and move on. So I wanted to throw out there that we are Division I Athletics. We are a part of the Ohio Valley Conference and the Mid-American Conference as well. One of the things that I really wish that I would have done in my undergrad was go to more sporting events. So even if you're not a sports fan, I highly encourage you to check out any event that happens on campus because we have really great um, school spirit. And so here at SIUE, life is good on campus. Right now, there's not a whole lot of activity going on given the circumstances, but on a typical school year, we have a lot that happens. We have over 250 organizations, and I guarantee that you're going to find something that you have interest in. Um, like I mentioned in the previous slide, we are Division I athletics, so if you like sports and you like competing but you're not quite at that level, we do have the intramural and club sport option. We also have our fraternity and sorority life and our theater and dance productions. Any event that's held on campus, students can get into for free as long as they have their ID. The picture that you guys are seeing is of our newly renovated eSports arena. We just put this into one of our residence halls on campus. All of those items in that picture are surprisingly expensive, totally more expensive than I ever would have thought. If I could get one of those computer chairs in my office, I'm telling you I would, but it is just not in the budget. And that is all I got for you guys. It would help if I unmuted myself, huh? So my name is Terrence Bishop. I'm re representing Southern Illinois University Carbondale. And similar to Rachel M, I will be talking about involvement at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. But before I dive into talking about involvement here, specifically at SIUC, I just want to take a second and talk about involvement overall and like when to get involved and why to get involved. Um, involvement is like variety. It's the spice of life. You come to school to study a specific thing because you're passionate about that major or you want to fly that plane or whatever the reason is. Academics are typically one of the things that draw us to a school, but involvements are what add an extra layer to that. The way that I think of it, you have a whelmed scale, and let's hope that the virtual background behaves with my hand right now. But this is the whelmed scale, and this is where you want to be. This is perfectly whelmed. You don't want to be underwhelmed. You don't want to be overwhelmed. Where do we want to be? Perfectly whelmed. When you're underwhelmed, that's when we want to find opportunities to throw something more on your plate, to get involved with student government or a fraternity or a sorority or to volunteer in your community. If you're overwhelmed though, we don't want you occupying in that space. We want you to find opportunities to, to help lessen that burden. So that kind of leads me to the first thing that I want to talk about on this slide, which is disability support services. First of all, let's talk about our definition of disability support services. I think when a lot of students see that office, they're like, I'm not disabled. I don't need that office. But disability is an incredibly broad term. And that office is really just there to support you academically. If you have test anxiety, if you, you know, have whatever barrier to your education, the disability support services want to be that office to kind of get next to you and help you, you know, learn at the highest level. So that's really what it's there for. They provide accommodations like extra time and scribes. And I just really want to encourage you, if you're a student who uses these services, don't be shy, you know, take advantage of as much help as you can get. Um, so that's just one example of a support service that we have. I also want to talk really quickly about studying abroad. Here at SIUC, we have really strong relationships with a lot of abroad schools in Japan, in South America, in Europe. And that creates a lot of opportunities for students to go and work on their major, 
while also, you know, stomping on grapes on the weekend or running from bulls. And I don't know a single person who's went and studied abroad and then been like, that sucked. I, I, I didn't like that, that semester, you know, in, in Wales or in wherever. And part of the reason that I want to have this conversation about study abroad is I think a lot of students just assume that they can't. They assume that it's too expensive. They assume that what they're studying won't allow them to study abroad. And I want to encourage you to look into that here at SIUC, at SIUE, at SIMO, at wherever your heart takes you, because there's a lot of opportunity. So investigate that. So that's a little bit on the adding more to your plate or adding a little bit of support. I wanna talk a little bit about another office that we have on campus that's really focused on getting students involved. There we go, look at that beautiful Saluki. So I wanna talk about our Office of Student Engagement. This is an office that broadly covers all kinds of opportunities for students to get involved. This houses our student organizations from professional to personal. So whether you're someone who wants to use a student organization as a networking platform, or you're someone who wants to use a student organization to find the hottest anime that's coming out, or a new recipe that you can try in the kitchen, or some new stars, there's not really new stars, but you can make up new constellations or whatever with your astronomy club. The biggest thing for those student organizations is there a chance for you to get involved and to make friends that have a similar hobby and passion to you. So that kind of leads me to fraternity, fraternity and sorority life. Here at SIUC, it's about 10% of the population is involved in some form of Greek life. And I think that's a perfect number because that means that the students that want that experience of, you know, getting involved and seeking out leadership positions and, you know, finding that, that community, they have that. But it's not so big that it like spills over into other aspects of campus. And as I touched on that leadership development, fraternity and sorority life isn't the only way to seek out those opportunities. We have a, a program here that's called Emerging Salukis. And the idea behind Emerging Salukis is that you get the support to be a leader. You get leadership development training. You go through different situational trainings. So you can learn what's your leadership style, how can you improve that style, and how does that style interact with other people so that you can be your best version of yourself. So the biggest thing about involvement is that it wears a lot of different hats. Whether you wanna get involved purely as an opportunity to relax and to you know unwind, or if you wanna get involved as an opportunity to embellish your resume and to add more to that side of things, there's no wrong way to get involved. I don't think we talked at all about intramural sports yet, and I have to talk about those really quickly because of all the ways to get involved, that was probably my personal favorite when I was an undergrad. Intramural sports, if you haven't heard of those before, they're probably the most chill level of sports at universities. There's D1, there's club, and then there's intramural. Intramural sports are where failed dreams of high school championships go to live on. You can play in a team with your friends playing flag football, basketball, soccer. You can even just be a free agent if you want to use it as an opportunity to meet other people. So it's an awesome chance to get engaged with other students and to make some friends and maybe some enemies, um, but really just to have some fun and run around and have the time of your life. So I'm going to turn it over to the illustrious other Rachel. Thank you, Terrence. So like I said earlier, my name is Rachel Woodworth and I'm from SEMO, Southeast Missouri State University. So just like Rachel and Terrence have already touched on, even though we're three different institutions, we all three, all our institutions have so many ways to support you. So here at SEMO, we have a student success platform that we call SupportNet. 
Um, what it is, is it's a network of faculty, staff, and peers, and it's there to help students on their journey by providing them academic support, engagement opportunities, and the technology to kind of tie it all together. Um, the university offices assist the students, it assists our faculty and the staff, whether it's on the phone, online, and now, as we're all familiar with, video conferencing. Um, we, um, as an institution, understand that everything is changing and we're adapting. Um, so now more than ever, we're committed to helping, you know, navigate the new systems and stay on track. So this platform support and it helps you do that. Um, so students uh, that might have our support net offices that are part of it are academic advising, um, student financial services. Um, so all of those are in their support net and it's an online platform just to have uh, people along with their faculty members to kind of be there for them. So I'm going to touch on tutorial services. So tutoring. Um, something I personally had to realize when I got to college that tutoring is not a bad thing. In college, it will help distinguish that B from an A. Um, tutoring is free for all students. You can, and there's a wide range of tutoring options. You can have an individual one-on-one -on -one tutor group um, tutoring, or we have what we call SI sessions, which stands for supplemental instruction. And what those are is it's someone um, who has taken the class, and it's typically a uh, a more challenging class such as anatomy, chemistry, someone who has taken that class and passed it with an A is paid to retake that class and then they hold um, two to three study sessions a week um, to help you um, stay on top of that content. So it's really nice that that student's sitting in the same lectures you are and getting the same content you are and they're not explaining it, you know, three years ago when they took it out of one. It was no on Tuesday, the professor said you need to know this. So that student, the SI instructor, literally does everything you do except take those exams. So it's a great resource for you to help keep your grades up. Another awesome um, resource is the Writing Center. Um, the Writing Center will help improve your papers, whether it's, you know, you need help with your focus, your organization, your grammar, um, citations. Um, now they will not write your paper for you. Um, it's there to help improve it. Um, you can either come in person, you can drop it on Dropbox online, and they'll, um, the office has a rule that they respond within 48 hours, but they're really good about responding within the first 24 um, that they receive it. So just like they said, we want you to get involved. So we have over 200 clubs and organizations and a lot of the clubs and organizations I have matches the ones they have, but something, if the organization you're looking for is not already there, it takes you and four friends to start a club. So if that specific thing isn't already here, you can make it yourself. So my best friend was a physics major him and his science pals really wanted an astronomy club. So they started the astronomy club. By the time they graduated, there was the, uh, the telescope, the trailer that transports the telescope. That club is still up and running and um, they're graduated and gone. So you can easily make your mark and find that little um, niche for you. And then, just like Rachel and Terrence, we're a D1 school. Um, like SIUE, we also compete in the Ohio Valley Conference. And this past year, um, five of our teams were the division champs. So we're competitive, all three of us with each other. Um, yeah. Any? So Rachel, I had some questions that I wanted to ask my other Rachels about involvement. Are y'all ready? And I will also answer some of the questions that I'm asking myself. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is a great time to leave it on the contact slide, but I want to ask both of you, why is it important to get involved during my first year? So getting involved your first year is extremely important um, because it kind of gives you that ground to where you can understand whether or not it's physically able, well, physically possible to maintain your schoolwork as well as any activities that you get a part of. So you're basically wanting to use that first year as your trial and error period. Um, but it's really important to get involved as well, especially if you're coming to live on campus because then you get to build those first connections. I 100% agree with 
other Rachel, um, getting involved is really important for your mental health as well, because you're leaving home for the first time. You're with all these people that are complete strangers that you now live with and are surrounded by. And it's very easy to get homesick pretty fast. But if you get involved as soon as possible, that homesickness isn't as likely to happen. Um, I know I joined Greek life like my first month of school. And it was the best decision I made in college because I always had a group of friends. I always had something to do. Um, I know I would have struggled immensely if I didn't have um, that instant involvement when I got to campus. Awesome, thank you both. So for the next question, I'm going to answer it first. So I'll give you all a little bit of time to, to marinate on your response. And both of you don't have to go for this one. Um, but the first question is, I, or the second, you know what I'm saying. I feel overwhelmed by the amount of things that I can do. How can I find where I fit? And I think that this is something that I definitely want to, to, to resonate with because here at SIUC, we have over 300 clubs. How are you supposed to just know exactly which one of those is gonna be the best fit and option for you? So there's two things that I wanna talk about here. The first is involvement fairs. Involvement fairs are an opportunity. Every school has an involvement fair. So that's a chance for you at the start of the year to go around and see what all these different student organizations are doing. And even this fall, you know, with the virtual environment, they were still doing involvement fairs because it's still incredibly important for these organizations to get out there and find new members and for new members to get out there and find these student organizations. So the first resource you have is the involvement fair. But here at SIUC, we actually have involvement coaches, which I might have to, you know, go into that position next because those people literally just talk to students and explore their interests, explore their passions and their hobbies, and then help them find the fit with student organizations. Like how cool of a gig is that? So if you're a student that's having a hard time narrowing down those resources, that's something that I highly encourage you to look into. Which one of you wants to take this question next? Okay. All right. So I am very, very impressed with Carbondale and the fact that they have these involvement coaches because this is something that we don't have. So what I was going to suggest, obviously, is one, to check out the involvement fairs, whether that's in person or virtual, because um, they really do, you know, all of the organizations on campus are there, they're able to talk with you, um, you're able to register for whatever event, club that you might want to be a part of, but my advice was going to be after attending maybe one of these fairs to do your own research. Because um, every one of our schools, I'm sure, has some sort of involvement page on our main website and you can you know look up each organizations that that are offered um if you can look up contact information for who is head of the organization ask them specific questions but even learn um, just a little bit more about that organization so kind of do your own homework and see what you think um, is going to work best for you i 100 percent agree with both rachel and terrence they hit it on the nail there awesome so for this next one, I want us all to touch on this. So hopefully you all are prepared with an answer. But at your university, how can a student go about starting a student organization? What does it take? So at SIUC, it takes 10 students. You have to have 10 student signatures and one faculty sponsor and you've got yourself a registered student organization. So I think that's pretty reasonable. How about y'all? What does it take for, for y'all students to, to start a student organization? So at SIUE, I believe it is yourself and at least two or three other students. And you don't have to have um, any faculty signatures, but you do have to have an advisor who oversees your organization once you do get it up and running. At SEMO, it is a total of five, so you and four others, and then you need an advisor to help get that at club up and going. Awesome, so a lot of opportunities to, to start something and you know grow something and then leave something. 
So another question that we, we were asked is, is there such thing as being too involved? I think that depends on your personal preference. Kind of like I mentioned previously, you know, use your first year as your trial and error period. See what you can handle with your workload um, and anything else that you might get involved with. Um, I, really, you can, you're the only person who can determine if it's too much for you or not. Yeah, I would totally agree. I would just add on that, like, listen to yourself. And if you feel like you're getting stretched thin, you probably are. So maybe, maybe dial back on the responsibilities. I know that that was an issue that I had because I wanted to go, you know, to the fraternity meeting and the sports event and, you know, the free tie dye event. And I wanted to go when the dining hall was making pay rogies, you know, and when you're trying to get pulled in all these directions, you can really quickly not be present. I would also say time management will be your best friend. You're in college, you are now responsible for you. No one's there to tell you, you know, you have to go to class, you have this meeting, this meeting. So learning how much you can handle is really gonna help you balance. If you're on top of your time management game, you can be involved with lots of things, but if you're not so great, you might have to balance it out a little bit. I would say that in most cases, people should overestimate things. But in the case of being involved, it's never a bad thing to underestimate yourself because if you overestimate yourself, you're gonna find yourself in a difficult spot where maybe you can't handle what's you know going on. So just keep that in mind. Totally. And just to kind of pivot, um, I just wanna ask you all, is there anywhere on your campuses you can relax between classes? Because being involved and being in classes and being busy, 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 sometimes it's nice just to go to the campus lake or go to the forest. So what's it look like on the opposite end of the spectrum when you have to uninvolve? Is there places you can do that? So on SIUE's campus, there's plenty of places that you can relax, um, you know, indoors. But one thing that I do want to note is that we are considered a nature preserve. We sit on about two, um, 2,600 and something acres. So there are lots of trails on campus. There's lots of lakes and ponds. Um, so I highly suggest, you know, if the weather's great outside to get outdoors and get some fresh air um, because it really does make a world of a difference. We have lots of outside um, uh, like picnic tables. They're everywhere. We have hammocks outside. And even um, like due to COVID, they've increased the number we have so people can, you know, socially distant outside. So lots of, you know, casual places you can sit, hang out. Um, we have what's called our river campus, which is located right off the of Mississippi River. So a lot of people hang out down there and you can see the barges go by. So lots of outdoor places to hang out. Yeah, and I kind of like dropped my two without directly alluding to them, but we have a forest on campus and a campus lake. And I typically will take my dog to the campus lake because a nice loop around that and he's ready to sleep the rest of the day. But I use the forest, you know, in the middle of the day when I've been staring at my screen for four hours straight and I just need to see something different. It's really nice that you can see something truly different and just forget that you're right in the middle of campus. So thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you feel like you learned a little bit about involvement at each one of our universities, but also just the value and the importance of being involved overall. And I know that each one of us loves the student interaction. That's why we do this job. So don't feel like you're annoying us if you email us or call us, please, please reach out to us. Let us know. If you're listening to this, send me an email and let me know. I want to know. Send each of us an email um, because we really do this to help connect students to what is going to be the best option and opportunity for them. So 
Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. We are going to pass it back to our StriveScan friends. Excellent. First of all, I just want to say this was excellent. I really enjoyed it as a high school counselor. I think this is a really great, the way you focused your topic. And I hope that lots of people will be watching this, not just today, but like in future record that watch the recordings in the future. I will definitely send students here. Um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time focusing on like majors and what you're going to study. And obviously that's super important because that's what's going to keep you there. If you don't perform academically, you know, you, they might tell you to take a little bit of a break, but you do have to have that balance. And I appreciate it. Terrence, what was yours? Overwhelm, underwhelm, or what was it? Perfectly whelmed. Perfectly Over whelmed. Under, perfectly whelmed. That's what my advisor used to say. And she'd be like, I love it. She'd be like, I know that involvements feed your soul, but you're, you're overwhelming. You gotta, you gotta bring it back to perfectly whelmed. It's so good. That's such wisdom. I love it. I'm going to use it. See, your advisor is spreading so much knowledge on the world. I love it. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm going to really quick um, share my screen. I'm going to make yours go away. Sorry. Um, just to do a quick wrap up. Um, for people who are here or watching later. Oh, maybe I'm not going to do a wrap up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Just to say thanks for joining us. Um, if you're watching this recording, you already know that there are recordings available on the IACAC.org website. Um, there are still a few sessions left. People can sign up. But if you miss out, don't worry. You've got all these great recordings you can watch. And I just want to thank all of you again. You did a great job. This was super fun. Take thanks care. Thanks for having us. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care.